The SWOG 1500 trial is a randomized phase two study that's dedicated in a rare niche of patients with kidney cancer, specifically papillary kidney cancer. We think that that represents about 10 to 15 percent of patients, and the study has traditionally been very, very hard to accrue. Uh, but what I will say is that the results of this, I think, are quite practice changing. Uh, the study compared sinitinib as a control arm to one of three experimental arms incorporating cabozantinib, crizotinib, and savulitinib, three putative MET inhibitors. We think that MET is really tied to the biology of papillary kidney cancer. And what the study ultimately showed is that progression-free survival was significantly prolonged with capozantinib over sinitinib, uh, about nine months versus about five and a half months. Uh, this was a significant advantage, as was response rate, which was 23% with capozantinib, uh, actually with a handful of complete responses versus just a 4% response rate with sinitinib. So I think this data automatically sort of pivots cabozantinib into the standard uh, of care category for patients with upfront papillary disease. Uh, what I will say is that there uh, is uh, some questions surrounding the two arms that closed early in the study for savulatinib and crizotinib. Many have proposed that if we did a study that instead incorporated patients with met alterations from the get-go, those was, would have been different. But uh, needless to say, those arms closed on the basis of futility. You know, when we reflect on the data from SWOG 1500, the early closure of the savulitinib and crizotinib arm certainly draws a fair amount of curiosity. Um, I, I think that there is compelling data for savulitinib in the context of a trial called Savoie, uh, which is a randomized phase three study that closed prematurely. Um, and this specifically looked at met uh, altered patients. So in that uh, segment of patients, we saw progression-free survival amounting to seven months. Uh, here in SWOG 1500, it was less than three months. So it really suggests that perhaps if we looked at a specifically met altered population, savulitinib may have fared better. Uh, there's also some data from the EORTC CREATE study led by Patrick Shofsky uh, that suggests that if we had done a trial using specifically met altered patients and evaluated crizotinib, you know, the study may have potentially fared better. Um, you know, in that particular trial, uh, crizotinib showed a response rate of 50% in met altered patients, albeit, and this is a huge caveat, in just four patients in that trial. So, you know, I, I think that going back um, and getting the tissues from SWOG 1500, looking for met status may potentially add some explanations to why savulitinib and crizotinib underperformed in the trial. Obviously, in the clear cell kidney cancer space, there are many combinations of targeted therapy and immunotherapy that are being entertained. And of course, you know, there's a pension to do this for our patients with papillary kidney cancer. I'm just not sure if it's the right thing because we haven't proven in any sort of randomized design that immunotherapy is effective in and of itself. Um, so our next move is to design PATMET2, which is a combination study looking at cabozantinib with or without immunotherapy. And we haven't finalized the partner for PATMET2. It's going to be either atezolizumab or nivolumab. I see rationale for both. Uh, but fundamentally, we really need to hone in on why it is uh, or, and whether or not uh, patients with papillary kidney cancer would additionally benefit uh, from the addition of immunotherapy to cabozantinib.